there's a sentence tech executives love to repeat. AI won't replace jobs, it will replace tasks. That sentence is quietly deciding who keeps their income over the next five years. Your title survives, your role endures. But here's the paradox nobody talks about. A job doesn't need to disappear 100% to destroy your career. It just needs to unravel. When the support beams disappear, the structure collapses without ever being demolished. And according to WEF, millions of roles could be displaced by AI by 2030. So today we are about to explain exactly that, and we will guide you to make your career AI proof as well. AI replaces tasks, not jobs. Think about what a job actually is. It's not one thing. It's a load-bearing structure made of dozens of small functions. Some easy, some complex, some uniquely human. Some tasks are easy for AIs now. Other tasks still demand something biological like judgment, creativity, empathy, social nuance, ethical reasoning. Those are harder to replace. But these easy tasks are often the bulk of the work. Studies show that analysts and salespeople have 53% to 67% of their tasks automatable. Their managers, only 9% to 21%. So when companies adopt AI, they don't fire the analyst outright. They hand half their workload to a chatbot and now it needs fewer analysts for the same output. Picture a team of 10 people. They do routine work, AI comes in and takes the easiest 40% of those tasks. Now suddenly six people can do what, 10? Then another wave hits. AI gets smarter. It handles another 50% of the remaining tasks. Now it's three people doing the original work of 10. But the job titles still exist. And the humans, they're gone. This isn't a thought experiment. Walmart automated its warehouses with robots and laid off 1,500 people at a single fulfillment center. Amazon has deployed over a million robots across its facilities. The average Amazon warehouse has its lowest human headcount in 16 years, about 670 workers per facility. The jobs are still there, the people aren't. Economics of cutting headcount. Why would companies cut people instead of just shrinking roles? The answer is brutally simple, math. If you're running a company and your competitor automates a task for one-tenth the cost, you either do the same or you lose. There's no third option. Companies that don't cut costs get undercut, lose market share and die. So managers everywhere are asking the same question. Can AI do this work? If the answer is yes, they shift the task. Shopify's CEO told Teams, before you ask for more headcount, prove that AI can't do the work. The message from above is crystal clear. Find a way to do it with machines or you don't get to hire humans. The most dangerous of all is an AI native worker. This isn't someone reluctantly using ChatGPT on the side. This is someone who instinctively wields AI like a power tool. A marketer who immediately uses AI to draft content outlines, analyze data sets, respond to emails and generate campaign ideas. Versus a colleague doing everything manually. The AI fluent worker handles in minutes what took others hours. The data backs this up. Heavy AI users report saving about 5.4 hours per week, roughly 2.2 hours daily. A third of daily AI users save four or more hours weekly. Almost none of the part-time users see that benefit. The gap between the AI native and the AI resistant grows every day. Do the math. Over time, companies will naturally favor the supercharged workers. They keep the AI natives, they cut the rest. A single specialized AI user becomes more valuable than an entire team of traditionally trained workers, especially since each person you remove means less overhead. Every employee doesn't just cost a salary, they cost a manager, HR administration, benefits, a desk, electricity, and a share of the building. They also cost time in meetings, coordination overhead, communication bandwidth. When you remove one person, you often remove a manager too. You consolidate support roles, you eliminate meetings. When you go from 100 people to 70, you don't just save 30 salaries. You save a whole tier of management. Suddenly the organization is flatter, faster, and way more efficient. So cutting another 10 people yields even bigger gains per person. Each round of cuts begets another. This scaling down of overhead accelerates the headcount collapse. AI agents and productivity explosion. But AI agents take this to another dimension entirely. Forget tools. Imagine autonomous AI workers. Not assistants, but agents. You give them a task and they handle it end to end. Research an issue. Write a report. Email relevant data to stakeholders. Book meetings. Chase down answers. A single AI agent can work 24-7 on complex, multi-step tasks. An entire team of AI agents can be supervised by one human. McKinsey studied real deployments. One bank started with just three engineers. 
they created 100 AI agents supervised by only five people, automating a whole modernization process and cutting time and labor costs by over 50%. Time to completion was cut in half. Output exploded. Productivity no longer scales with human effort. It scales with how many agents you can deploy. Early trials of agentic systems deliver 3% to 5% annual productivity gains at the company level. As teams and processes mature, that figure could climb to 10% or higher. Imagine entire departments replaced by a few humans running the machines. The same crushing logic applies to blue-collar work. Industrial robots have already replaced 8.5% of global manufacturing jobs. In China, 14 million manufacturing jobs could be automated by 2030. BMW announced plans to cut 6,000 jobs in Germany as it shifts to electric vehicles and automation. Car factories, electronics plants, warehouses, logistics hubs, they all hum along with far fewer humans than before. Once you retrofit a factory to run on robots, you don't bring thousands of people back. The investment is made, the machines are installed, you can't unwind that, those jobs are gone permanently. You might be wondering, how do you navigate this new age of AI yourself? To ensure you are the one running the agents and not the one being replaced by them, I've mapped out the transition in the AI Career Survival Guide. It is the tactical playbook for moving from worker to architect. The link is in the description and the pinned comment. Secure your future now. Here's the most terrifying part. Adoption accelerates itself. Early adopters pull ahead because their data and systems improve continuously. Models get better with more usage and data. It's not a one-time upgrade. It's an ongoing compounding advantage. The leader's AI gets smarter every day. The follower's AI falls further behind. ChatGPT reached 100 million monthly users in two months, the fastest growth of any consumer app in history. Companies and countries that build AI infrastructure fast gain huge early wins in efficiency, market share, and competitive advantage. Others have to chase, or they get left behind. Energy, compute, and the new constraints. With all these people out, labor is no longer the bottleneck. Energy and compute become the limiting factors. US data centers consumed 183 terawatt hours of electricity in 2024. By 2030, that's projected to jump to 426 terawatt hours. That's 12% of the entire US grid by the end of the decade. Modern AI chips draw 700 to 1,200 watts each. A single server rack for AI inference burns 30 to 80 kilowatts of power. That's three to eight times more than conventional servers. Many regions don't have the grid capacity to even plug in a hyperscale AI data center. Companies are literally queuing up for electricity. That means every AI model competes with homes, hospitals, and cities for power. NVIDIA's CEO called building sovereign AI infrastructure more important than developing the atomic bomb. He wasn't being poetic. He was saying that access to compute and energy now defines national power. The country or company that secures massive compute capacity wins the AI era. Everyone else becomes dependent. Compute becomes a new kind of currency. Historically, money was used to hire labor. You had capital, you hired workers. They did your work, you paid them wages. That's how value was created. Now money is used to bid for GPUs, data centers, and electricity. Tech giants own their own hyperscale infrastructure with custom proprietary chips, keeping their models and data fully under their control. Companies are signing long-term power contracts with energy providers, locking in electricity supply for the next 20 years. Governments are subsidizing data center build-outs like their building weapons programs. Impact on wages, living, and identity. With so much labor redundancy, wage growth stalls, and labor's bargaining power plummets, employers hold all the cards now. Headline GDP growth and corporate profits are up, but employment and wage growth are flat. Economist Mohammed El Aryan warns that we're approaching an era where GDP climbs even as employment and wages stay stagnant. In other words, corporate profits and machine-driven productivity could soar, but typical workers won't see their pay rise. This creates a K-shaped economy. The top pulls away while the bottom stalls. If consumers' incomes don't grow, demand dies. Society will likely need new baseline supports. Universal basic income, government stipends, tax credits, ideas once fringe are now mainstream. A London School of Economics review notes that guaranteed income could address AI-era wage inequality, job insecurity, and mass job loss. 
For the first time, humanity is building something that can outthink us faster than we can retrain. But the real loss isn't economic, it's existential. Work has always been identity, dignity, purpose. Psychologists confirm work provides identity and purpose in life. When jobs vanish, so does that identity. Picture someone who spent decades building expertise, solving problems, serving customers. Then an AI eats those tasks. What's left? Even low-wage workers find meaning in work. They matter. They're paid to be valuable. A stipend doesn't replace that. Status will shift. Value won't come from tasks or hours anymore. It'll concentrate in what machines can't touch. Vision, creativity, taste, influence. Gartner predicts 20% of organizations will eliminate more than half their middle management roles by 2026. As Anthropic CEO warned, this could feel like a white collar massacre if not managed carefully. Historical context and strategic perspective. Every technological revolution dislocated labor, the loom, steam engines, computers. But AI is fundamentally different. The loom automated hands, steam engines automated muscle, computers automated calculation, none generalized across cognitive work. AI does, it writes, analyzes, draws, solves problems, brainstorms, everything we thought was uniquely human. The strangest part is nobody's actually paying for AI. Consumer AI is free or ad supported. Companies burn billions subsidizing free services to capture market share and train models. OpenAI will burn $143 billion in negative cash flow from 2024 to 2029 before profit. It's losing money on ChatGPT subscriptions. Users don't pay money. They pay in data, attention, and taxes. Google and Meta hemorrhage billions on AI. Governments fund it like weapons programs. The titans invest. The masses provide invisible value, data, behavior, attention. Eventually someone collects. Eventually bills come due. So who wins and who loses? The winners are those who control the AI-driven means of production. That means tech titans, chip manufacturers, cloud companies, and even governments that secure cheap energy and data center capacity. AEE Times says the US is leading with huge AI data center investments, but the Middle East is converting oil wealth into compute power, and Europe is racing to build its own infrastructure to ensure sovereignty. In corporations, middle managers disappear, their executives thrive, so do rare people with judgment, vision, or the ability to run machines. The divide widens fast. The alma mater is that AI collapses the cost of human labor by automating tasks within jobs. Not smoothly, in jumps, in sudden efficiency gains. And work, wages, and value get reframed. What we once valued is now cheap. Value shifts to what can't be replaced. If intelligence itself becomes cheap and widespread, we have to ask something new. When intelligence becomes cheap, what stays valuable? That answer defines the next era of work, society, and meaning. Because a job isn't a bundle of tasks, it's a bundle of identity, purpose, and connection. When tasks vanish, you lose yourself. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more. And don't forget to grab the guide in the description. Because if work is how our species organize meaning for millennia, the collapse of work isn't an economic problem. It's a civilizational one.